Liberty Fighters Network. 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 Good day, liberators and fellow South Africans. I'm making this video because I think that it's definitely relevant at these times we are living in. And um, I just want to remind everyone that there is a disclaimer at the beginning of all our videos, um, specifically saying that we are raising opinions and it's up and giving information and it's up to you at the end to do with that information what you want and to, to make up your own mind. And, um, but now with this palestinian israeli crisis that's going on in the war we are all forced to pick sides and ultimately it's the it's the civilian jewish people and the civilian palestinian people who are suffering um all these warmonger bastards who are sitting out there they are thriving on bloodshed and and wars and i think that that it's time that the people of of the world um realize who the actual enemies are and then target them and realize that that the Jewish people and the Palestinian people have always been used to advance their own greedy satanic principles. And um, let me let me rewind to uh, an incident that you might probably do not know about. But it's it's very important to to refer to it at this point in time because of um, how information, how someone's opinion can easily be turned around and identified as as terrorism, as, um, as 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 evil, and quickly influence the people to also think the same. Um, in in the nineteen seventies, there was a um, two two individuals, uh, a man and a and a woman, um, uh, Ulrike Meinhof and Andreas Bader. Um, they were known as the Bader Meinhof um, group. And they formed uh, an organization called the Rota uh, Army Fraction, uh, which basically means the, the uh, Red Army Faction. Um, now, um, Ulrike Meinhof and, um, ba uh, and Andreas Bader, they were ultimately caught um, by the police after they've terrorized and uh, apparently they've bombed and, um, and you know, they, 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 they committed acts of violence um, and they were then caught and imprisoned and um, wh what happened with them uh, irrespective of the fact that that they had this uh, basic philosophy that the German people are forced into believing stuff that they are not comfortable with that they are being programmed by the current Western society to, um, to, to, to uh, uh, follow their narratives and beliefs. And at the end of the day, as I can understand from the research I've done, they were very pro that each German were, was supposed to, to develop his or her, her own opinion about the 20 years earlier, uh, 50 years earlier, uh, Second World War and Nazism, etc., etc., and that it should be a automatic heating process for everyone and to decide on whether they they like the Nazis or whether they do not. It's a, it was purely a choice. And I'm not going to come out now and say that, yes, I'm a pro-Nazi or I'm an anti-Nazi or, or an anti-Semitist or I love the Jewish people. And, and then the concept of Semitism is also very controversial for me because of the fact that, that a Semite is actually someone uh, which believes in an Abrahamic faith, which includes Christianity and Islam. So um, why one should actually be identified as an anti-Semitist just because you might have a different opinion about certain aspects of Judaism uh, and, and you're a Christian and suddenly you are being uh, sidelined and said that you are anti-Semitist. Um, according to me, it's, it's effectively also that I'm against myself because Christianity was born out of an Abrahamic faith, out of the Semites. And um, but but that is just my opinion, and you can differ from it. Um, but let me go into the Rota Army Fraction, um, and and what happened to uh, to Ulrike uh, Meinhof and Andreas Bader. 
um, how this system, which was supposed to be very liberal, uh, suddenly turned against them and took away all their, their, their basic human rights. Um, and let, let me start off with, um, with uh, the prison um, where they were held. Um, the German government built a high sophisticated prison called the uh, Stammheim prison. And um, the Stammheim prison was there, there was uh, special uh, special uh, uh, changes made to this this prison, and and they were uh, they've they've built uh, certain additional quarters and and uh, erected certain uh, security measures specifically to accommodate the border mine of Gulu. And um, now the moment when when you <laughs> you go and read what what happened to the uh, to, to to the border mine of group, uh, you you will totally be amazed because it there there are so many events currently taking place where something similar is happening, and you just wonder, but but it's it's history, and 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 uh, I always say that that if you you uh, uh, um, want to know what the future is, just look at the history because history is bound to repeat itself, and there are certain things that happened in in history. And, and that is why I love history so much, because there are certain things that happened in, in the past and, and then it suddenly is being repeated and, or something similar is happening. So if you know history, you can sort of project what is going to happen and the future by well, almost 100 percent. That's what, what I believe. And um, just just listen to what happened to the border mine of uh, gang, which uh, and, and, and after they have been arrested and. Um, let me show you this, and uh, I must just put up my spectacles to read that. Faction member deaths. Now, Ulrike Meinhof was found hanged on 9 May 1976. In the aftermath, prison census allowed through parcels with instructions for the surveying prisons to follow suit, compete with ropes sufficient to do the job. Andreas Bader, uh, Gudrun Enslin, and Jan Karp Rasper reportedly committed suicide in the high security block during the night of 18 October 1977, which became known as the death night for the uh, leaders of the Red Army faction. Bader and Rasper were said to have shot themselves, whereas Enslin apparently chose a method of supposed suicide similar to that of Meinhof. A fourth member, um, Imgard Moller, allegedly stabbed herself four times in the chest with a stolen knife. She survived the suicide attempt and has since stated that the deaths were not suicide, but rather yeah, extrajudicial killings undertaken by the West German government of the time. A claim strongly denied by the German government's former and present. The deaths of the prisoners were among the events collectively known as the German Autumn, which also included a series of terrorist attacks and the West German government's response. Now, um, yeah, <laughs> we regularly hear uh, about either, either criminals or, or good people who suddenly uh, pass away in, in very strange, strange strange ways and then the government, respective governments always comes out and say that no, it was a suicide or it was just purely an accident. But it's, it, the circumstances surrounding it were so, were so strange and, and awkward that one cannot help oneself to theorize uh, some sort of conspiracies. And um, so, so, but I'm, I'm not there to, 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 to create these conspiracies for you. Uh, you can go out and do your own research about this and come to your own conclusion. I'm just bringing you the basic facts of the Bader Meinhof gang uh, or Bader Meinhof group. And when, when they were trialed, uh, more things, strange things happen. Um, and uh, let me show you what the, the weird things that, that, that happened. Um, they were, um, and, and let me read this uh, to you. The government hastily approved several special laws for use during the uh, Stamham trial. Oh, yes. Um, the prison, Stamham prison, was also changed to make provision for a courtroom to trial them. And, uh, and what I'll, I'll read for you is that, that they were not allowed to have legal representatives. They were trialed criminally for criminal offences, but they never had the opportunity to be represented by legal representatives. Um, because they said that the legal representatives, and, and let, let, let me read that to you so that it can make sense. The government actually approved several special laws for use during the Stamal trial. Lawyers were excluded from trial for the first time since 1945. 
after being accused of various inappropriate actions, such as helping to form criminal organizations, uh, section 129 of the criminal law, the authorities invaded and checked the lawyer's offices for possible incriminating material. Minister of Justice Hans Jochen Vogel uh, boasted that no other Western state had such extensive regulation to exclude defense attorneys from a trial. Klaus Koisen, Hans Christian Strobel, uh, Kurt Grunewald, who had been working preparing uh, for the trial for three years, were expelled the second day of the trial. On 23rd of June 1975, um, coincidentally uh, one year before my my, my birth, Croissant Strobel, uh, who had already been expelled, and Mary Becker were arrested. And in the meantime, police invited several defense attorneys' offices and homes, seized documents and files. Strobel and Croissant were were remanded and held for four and eight weeks respectively. Crossan had to pay 80,000 Deutsche marks and report weekly to a police station and his transport and identity papers were seized. Um, so the, the German government went out of their way to, to take away basic human rights from, uh, from these so-called terrorists uh, during the trial. Um, uh, documents that are the papers which are usually uh, considered to be uh, privileged. Um, by between uh, attorney and client were seized. They, they, they went on a fishing expedition to get information which they can eventually use against finding the Badermanov uh, group uh, guilty of terrorism and various other, other crimes. And um, interesting, this is what came out afterwards, that um, the later, when their requests were rejected, U.S. agents Barton Osborn, ex-CIA, ex-member of the Phoenix program, GPEC, NSA, and Gary Thomas gave extensive interviews organized by defense lawyers on 23rd of June 1976, so coincidentally on my birthday, um, where they explained how FRG support was crucial for U.S. operations in Vietnam. Peck concluded that the RAF was the response to criminal aggression of the U.S. government in Indochina and the assistance of the German government. The real terrorist was my government. Thomas presented data about the joint operations of FRG and U.S. secret services in Eastern Europe. He had also observed the Staman trial and referred to CIA instructor, instructor teaching them how to make a murder look like a suicide. These statements were confirmed by the CIA case officer Philip Aggie. Okay, now um, what this basically entails is that that everything that the border mine of group said was happening and why they were forced into the the acts of terrorism was that the the u.s government was going out of its way to be to, to, to create instances where they just interfere in the, the, the works of countries and then eventually they are the actual terrorists they are the enemies of of the people and um, yes, the border mine uh, group also went to Palestine to get uh, military training there. And that is maybe why they were also targeted at the end of the day, because they, uh, they were going against USA uh, ideals and uh, principles, especially with the creation of the state of Israel, et cetera, et cetera. And at the end of the day, the German uh, government had to make special acts of parliament to, um, to take away basic human rights from them on their trial. And then, strangely enough, um, each one of them faced this strange death. And I'm not saying that it's it's the government that did it, but it's very, very suspicious. And um, you can go out and do your own research about this. Why I am I mentioning the border mine of group is that we must be careful. There's a narrative out there that even if we are the slightest against the uh, Israeli-Palestinian war at this stage, and we might find some th sympathy towards the Palestinian people. Um, we are so easily exposed, um, or, or those who are thinking in that way, are so easily exposed, and um, they, they are forced into uh, being monitored. I've seen from my own personal side, suddenly since I've started um, speaking out against the state of Israel, and the state of Israel is a creature which is, it's not, if my opinion is that um, Israel, if it was a legitimate country in terms of the Bible, as I understand it as a Christian, it would have been called a kingdom of Israel because of the fact that Israel had kings before. 
The fact that it's now called a state implies, according to my research, that it's the late estate of the king. Um, that is what the state is. Uh, it's, it's what's left to be wound up after the death of a king. Uh, that is why a king lies in state or president lies in state because that is his corpse. That is what's uh, his corpse basically governing after his death. And um, now my God, the creator, is uh, definitely alive. Um, that is what I believe. He's not dead. So by referring to the state is is not a kingdom. It is not a kingdom. It's a it's a fictional creature that's trying to make us believe that it is the people of Israel. But according to me, only God has got the right to reinstitute the tribe of Israel. He and only God will do that, and. What we are seeing, I believe, is basically created by man. It's not a creature of God. That's why it's called a state of Israel, which is the deceased estate, uh, fictitious creature of a dead king. Think about that. And um, what I'm saying under the, uh, I've, I've seen how my stance on, on social media has been attacked. Um, I've suddenly received so many um, negative public, uh, publicity and uh, negative uh, posts and comments on, on my, my groups and from, from people which do not even bear um, if, if they are actually people, um, maybe just plainly fake accounts, who are uh, 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 trolling my, my social media posts. And some of them are people I, I know very well and, and have been with us in support for a very long time, but just the fact that I've got a different opinion that they do, I stand to be put before a, uh, a firing squad um, because I'm not allowed to do that. And it reminds me so much of what happened to the border mine of uh, group. Um, eventually, all their rights have been taken away from them just because they had a different opinion and different outlook on what was going on. And I'm not talking good. Uh, I'm not speaking anything good about the uh, proclaimed violence and terrorism that they committed. Uh, I always said that I will always be diplomatic and uh, advocate peaceful resolutions to any conflict like this. Um, but unfortunately, uh, they did go a step further and committed uh, uh, acts of violence and, and terrorism as such in the eyes of the German people and the West, and they, they suffered for it. Um, the, the rights have been taken away, have been scrapped, as if they're not, they, they were not treated as human beings. They were, they were totally outcasted. Um, they even built a certain section of a prison specifically for them. The courtroom was in the prison. Um, and then suddenly the one after the other had this awkward death, um, which the government of Germany remains saying that, no, that was just them. But unfortunately, too many of these, these incidents of suicide and strange killings have taken place. And now that the uh, JFK uh, secret papers have also been made public, we now realize that the uh, assassination of JFK was not as we were told. Um, there were others involved in his death, meaning that he was assassinated by his own people, according to those papers. Or there's a strong indication that the entire uh, investigation and judicial report that were issued at the end of the day, the, or the uh, commission of inquiries, um, were, were tampered with, were not correct. Um, but in any event, people, um, Go and, and read some history, and especially on this border mine of uh, event, and um, and you might find interesting information there, which we can also utilize as relevant in these times, and especially in connection with the Israeli-Palestinian conflict and war that's going on, and affecting all of us at the end, not only those innocent civilians between the Jewish and the Palestinian people. Until the next day, Godspeed. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network.